Come on. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not, not with thee. I just want really the first clause of verse uh, 7, Proverbs 23, it says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Uh, another uh, translation would read, As a man thinketh, so is he. The way you think is the way you are. Um, the way you think is the way you are. You look how you think. If you check yourself out right now, you look how you think. You have what you think. You are who you think you are. I, I can remember the words of my mom. You know, we'd be cutting up or something like that. Mama would look right at us, right at us and say, who do you, who do you think you are? Or somebody would do something stupid, that's what they would say. Who do you think you are? Talking to me that way. Who do you think you are? Who do you think? Well, I come to preach to you on this morning that you are who you think you are. I want to preach to you about winning the battle in your mind. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Smile upon us and bless us through your word is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Doubt is your enemy. Doubt is your enemy. Second guessing yourself is your enemy. Not being confident in what you believe. Not knowing in your heart the truth that lies within you. The truth that lies within your future. No matter what your present look like. No matter what your reality looks like, there's a greater truth that exists. And it exists in your mind. But there's always a fight, Rhonda. There's always a battle for what's going on in your mind. Uh, as a little kid, I, 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 I still, you know, the Bible says, except you become as a little child, you cannot uh, enter uh, or receive the kingdom. And so I, I don't let go of my child likeness. I don't want to be childish, but I want to be childlike. When I was coming up, one of the cartoons, Steve, that we used to watch all the time was Fred Flintstone. Flintstones, meet the Flintstones. They're a modern Stone Age family from the, they're a, Come on, y'all need to get y'all stuff together. Y'all need to have rehearsal. <laughs> Nonetheless, um, every so often in one of those cartoons with Fred Flintstone, um, uh, uh, he would be um, betwixt two. He would be in the valley of decision, and magically an angel would show up on this side. Y'all remember the angel guy, right? He had white. And then on the other side, there was a devil. He always had a tail and a pitchfork. And, and, and the good guy was always in his head about doing the right thing. Come on, man. Tell Wilma, you know, don't do Barney like that. Keep it real. But the other guy was always saying, but, you know, you can get this money. Nobody will ever find out. There was a battle going on. He was not, he was not armed with, with sword and shield. He didn't have a gun or anything. But there was a real live battle going on in his mind. And I, I, even though that's a, that's a funny depiction uh, of what uh, they were trying to communicate in a cartoon, that is really our reality every day. Every day you get up, there is a fight. There is a war going on in your mind. There is a fight. There's a battle, amen, for your faith. There's a battle for what you believe about yourself. There's a battle for what you believe about everybody else. And I'm telling you, everything that you're seeing, everything that you're hearing, amen, even the things that you're tasting and smelling is warring against what's really true, what's really real. Mm, mm, mm. I don't mean to offend nobody, but y'all let me let me let me keep it just uh, uh, let me keep it 100. There are a lot of people that put on an outfit and they look in the mirror and they see what they see. It is what it is, but they don't have no shame at walking over to somebody and saying, "Do I look fat in this?" Well, come on now, you just you just saw what you you saw what you seen. 
What you trying to get is somebody else's perspective. Ain't no sense of you trying to <laughs> create something that's not. Amen. It is what it is. Now, you can get a vision for something that you don't see in the mirror. That's what I'm doing myself. I'm looking at the mirror, don't like what I see. So I get a vision, amen, for what I desire. I get a vision for it. And I begin to, amen, work my thought processes. I want to talk about that this morning. How? How do you win the battle in your mind? How do you keep, amen, to God on the right track when everything is coming at you that says you should go left, you should go right? How do you believe good about yourself when sometimes your own behavior says the antithesis? How do you even keep faith in the people that are around you when you hear gossip, when you see this, when you sense that? How, how do you keep your mind straight? My God, how can you get to anything that you have gold or purpose for yourself when there's always doubt when there's hesitation when there's reservation when there's vacillation today you is tomorrow you're not you're up you're down I mean there's always a shifting how do you get your mind grounded I want to talk about that the text says hey man as a man thinketh, so is he the first thing that I need you to underscore is that the way you think is the way it is so if you don't think you're going to win, you're not going to win. If you don't think you're going to accomplish your goal, you will not accomplish your goal. The world will not go against your thoughts. The Bible said that the whole world moaneth and groaneth. It's waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. There's one translation that would suggest that the atoms, the protons and neutrons and electrons, they are all standing at attention to see what you say as a result of what you think or to see what you do as a result of what you think because the cosmos comes together to create the action or the motion that you set in order. You send something this way, everything starts working towards that. Even the world today, even the world today that have tapped into um, the, uh, the, the new systems of marketing are making billions and billions and billions of dollars on this principle. Why? Because if you go online one time and you look at, you look for a red car. I'm looking for a red car. I just did one time. All right, okay, I'm done with that. Well, for the next six weeks, you're going to get advertisement that says red cars. Red cars. Come here. You like that red car? Hey, we still got this red car. We got this dress. Whatever it is you were looking at whether it's a trip, whether it's a car, whether it's a house, you're looking for real estate, amen. Soon as that, amen, hits that engine, that search engine with your, uh, uh, what is it, your cellular ID, your identification for your internet, my God, you are going to get bombarded with that stuff. The world is tapping into a principle that suggests uh, what you send out begins to chase you. What you want, it comes at you. What you want. Misery loves so when you send out that old bad vibe, that's what you're going to get. You want a pity party? Keep that look on your face. It's coming. Yeah. But, but, but if you want to win, winners like to be around, around winners. Amen. Go getters like to be around go getters. No sense of hanging out with chickens. Amen. When you're an eagle, when you're designed to fly high, doesn't mean that you think you're better. It's just that you're designed to fly and somebody else is not even thinking about flying. I can't spend my time with you. Why? Because birds of a feather flock together. I got to control my mind. I got to control my mind. So let's start out with the heavy stuff. There's a passage here in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Uh, this is the heavy stuff. This is the heavy stuff. It says, let this mind uh, be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. What mind do you need to have? The mind that was in Christ. Stay with me, people. What mind do you need to have? Betty Buchanan, you need to have the same kind of mind that Christ had. Let this mind be in you. That was in Christ. What was the mind that was in Christ? Here it is, Ozell. It says, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with what? So you're telling me I need to think that I'm equal with God? I know I can't get no amens up in. I know. It's hard to say this hard. Me? My dirty self? My filthy self? My no good self? It says, this is the mind that you should have. That you should consider yourself equal with God. It's heavy, I know. It says, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. 
but he made himself of no reputation, amen, and took upon uh, the for, uh, him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being fashioned or found in fashion as of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. What the text is saying here is that Christ was obedient to death. He humbled himself. He was fashioned like a man, but he thought like God. In other words, yes, I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to be obedient. Yes, I'm going to let y'all lie on me and tie me to this cross and crucify me. But I don't want you to think that uh, this condition is affecting who I think I am. I, I know who I am. The Bible says, let this mind be in you. And just for a moment, I need to build you up in this era of your thinking. There are a lot of people that would consider this verse in your King James Bible, the real Bible. This is the Bible that Jesus used. Slow people keep up. Ah, in the real Bible it says uh, uh, that the mind of Christ was a mind that considered itself equal with God yeah. and it starts out by saying Deacon Elsie that you need to have this mind the mind of Christ that considers yourself equal with God I've taught you this before, and that is you are not the almighty. You are, amen, a chip off the old block. You are his offspring. And if that, amen, if it's on the source, it's on the offspring. It's as if we are a stream that flows from the ocean. If there's water in the ocean, there's water in the stream. If there's life that can be sustained in the ocean, life can be sustained in the river. My God, if you can drown in the ocean, then you can drown in the river. If there's death that can be in the, amen, sustained in the ocean, certainly it can can be in the river so we are a stream in st john chapter 15 he says i am the vine ye are the branches you are an extension of me you're just, you're an, you're you're god in another form come on you've heard me preach it you you are god in another form and i'm telling you there is a war going on every single day that allows you to realize this because when you get up and you feel tired or you feel pain, you don't feel like God. You know, when stuff don't work out for you, you don't feel like God. But what you don't understand is that God is not limited by space or time. And in this human form, we are. And our problem is we speak things into existence, but we don't have the patience to see them manifest. And you start allowing the battle to be forfeited because you cannot wait on God. If you just learn how to wait on God, everything that you speak, it will come to pass. If you just learn how to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, my God, it may not come when you want it to come, but it will show up right on time. Why? Because you've been made in the image of God and the power of life and death is in your tongue. So you start forfeiting the battle and giving up and feeling like you're losing because it's not showing up right now. You have need of patience. You have need of patience. Everybody say this after me. Word becomes flesh. The term word in St. John chapter 1 verse 14, uh, actually verse 1 says in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. But if you keep reading, verse 14 says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We know that was Jesus Christ. The term word is defined as thought. So it, it could read in the beginning was the thought, plan, or purpose. In the beginning was the plan of God. In the beginning was the purpose of God. In the beginning was the thought of God. In the beginning was the word, saying synonymous terms. And it was the thought, the plan, the purpose of God became flesh and dwelt among us. Well, Christ was the only begotten of the Father. Here's some revelation. I'm going to stay heavy just for a minute. Um, uh, it is normally the mother that begets. The mother brings forth. But Christ is the only begotten of the Father. <laughs> yeah, Christ, Christ is the only one came right out of the Father. Uh, he, he didn't, he, uh, God, did not, uh, God did not send uh, uh, his seed, his sperma, his pneuma uh, through uh, the, reg the, the regular procedure that a child is born. Yes. He was born of the Virgin Mary, but he was begotten of the Father. He came right out of the Father, full of grace and truth. Yet, every single one of us was begotten of God. We just came through a system. Impregnation. But we too are the thought, plan, and purpose. We too are a word that have become flesh. 
You are, we are, the thought of God that have manifested in the earth. That's who you are. Yeah, I know, I know, it's, I know. So if the term word is thought, the term word, Steve, is plan, the term word is purpose, then you are the word of God. You are the thought of God. You are the plan of, you are the purpose of God. That's who you are. When people, I understand why people waste their life because they don't understand they are the thought of God. Uh, they're the plan of God. They don't understand they are the, they, you are literally God's dream come true. That's who you are. You are God's dream. God dreamed about you. And there you are. And because we have been made in the image of God, this is how we frame out our world. Our world is framed out by our words. Just as God said, let there be. Let there be. Let there be. And there was, and there was, and there was. Everything that God spoke, it came into existence. And because we have been made in the image of God, this is the same way we frame out our world. Our world is framed out by our words. And again, the term word is by our thoughts, by our plans, by our purpose. You frame your world by your thought, your plan, your purpose. Lord, help me. Help me with this. In Genesis chapter 50, I'll prove it to you, uh, verse number 20, uh, here is the end of the story of Joseph. Uh, for those that don't know, Joseph had brothers. They didn't like him, uh, and, and they, they had a plan to do Joseph wrong. They did him wrong, but at the end of the, uh, of the story, Joseph is really a blessed man. He's in a position of prosperity, and he blesses the brothers that did him wrong. And this is what he said in Genesis chapter 50, verse 2. He says, but as for you... You thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Uh, what Joseph says is, y'all did me wrong because you thought evil against me. <laughs> I'm in deep water right now. And that is, every action begins with a thought. This is, this is why... You have to learn how to control your thoughts. Because every action begins with a thought. So when you got crazy thoughts, you know, you know what teenagers say? You know what they say? They did something stupid. Why did you do that? You know what they say? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't think. I didn't think. I didn't. I wouldn't have done that if I had just, I didn't think about it. I didn't think it could turn out this way. I didn't think. And so I, I acted without thinking. Uh, why would you think something good is going to come out uh, uh, with you acting without thinking? But if you think, if you think, you know what? I don't want to get a speeding ticket right here. Slow down. You know, I don't want to get arrested, riding dirty, get this stuff out the car. Whatever it is, if you think about it, man, if you think about it, you see this brother's a player, player. If you think about it, I ain't trying to get my heart broke seven times a week, twice on Sundays. Come on now. Oh, no, 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 no. You got to think about it. You got to think about it. There are decisions that you have to make. You need to think about it. There are decisions you have to make about you that you, re you, you, you really need to think about it because your thoughts are creative. And you got to win this battle in your mind. I'm going to, y'all track with me today because I'm going to give you some real stuff. Now, if you've been made in the image of God, if you are an extension of God, if he is the branch and you, if you are, if he is the vine and you are the branch, if he is the ocean and you are a stream, if you are an extension of God or God in another form, then you must understand that there is a divinity working in you. And this is where we miss it a lot. Y'all y'all really need to zero in because I'm giving you the stuff, stuff, stuff right here, right now. And that is, we always second guess and doubt our divine intuition. You see people, mm, and you know this one is not good, you ignore that. Or you meet someone and you know this is your connect right here. This is it. Yeah. 
whether it's for business, whether it's relationship, whatever it is, and you, and you know what, you, you will connect with them sometimes 15 years later, and you'll say, you know what, 15 years ago, I felt that. We had this little, and I, I knew then, I don't know, I didn't waste 15 years sitting around here doing stupid stuff, and I knew years ago, I, this is what I should have did. We ignore the divine intuition. We ignore the leading of the spirit. And the way Lachiana the Lord speaks to us is through our thoughts. You just get a thought. And you know what we do? Rebuke it. Shake it off. Doubt it. Don't feed it. Don't obey it. It's a thought. And we lose the battle right there. And find ourselves broke, busted, disgusted, lonely, mad, sad, and a list of other negative things. Because we don't go with our first thought. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27 says, To whom God uh, would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. I just want you to take a look. God made known his mystery, and this is the mystery. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Uh, the fact that Christ is in you is, is what everything heaven is hoping on. Boy, I hope they listen to Christ. Boy, I hope they listen to the divine nature that I placed in them. Boy, I hope, I hope they listen. Man, I wish they stopped listening to their fears. I wish they stopped listening to their friends. I wish, wish they stopped listening, my God, to everything they read and everything that comes. I wish, they, I wish they would listen. Christ in you is the hope of glory. God is not banking on your education. Yeah. Heaven is not banking on your experience. Heaven is banking on Christ in you that you would yield yourself to the Spirit of God and be led by the Spirit. As God speaks to your mind, He will lead you and guide you and direct you and order your steps. And many times you are being led by your fears, by your doubt, by outward pressure, by inward pressure. You are being led by the spirit of competition that you let overtake you in complete in competition with your sister in competition with your brother in competition with people on the job and God man you need to throw away all that stupid stuff and say Lord here am I send me what do you want me to do I'm clear my head is clear my mind is clear what am I supposed to do I'm not trying to impress this one that one or the other one I'm not even after my own gratification I understand it's Christ in me that is the hope of glory clap you don't know when to clap. Clap right there. Christ in me is the hope of glory. Christ in me. Say it with me. Christ in me is the hope of glory. Say it again. Christ in me is the hope of glory. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 it says this. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according what? Okay. So, so. He can do exceeding abundantly. Not exceedingly abundantly, but exceeding abundantly. But that only happens according to the power that works in you. So, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. So God has all power. Yep, yeah, but that don't mean nothing to you. So God can do anything. Yeah, but that don't mean nothing to you. Because he's only going to do exceeding abundantly according to the power that worketh in you. The problem is you don't believe that God's power can work <laughs> it's like the man it's like the man has got a son say I took him to your disciples they couldn't help him Lord can you do anything the Lord said do you believe he said Lord I believe just help thou my unbelief what he was saying is I, I believe you can I just don't believe that you'll do it for me there are a whole lot of people that believe that God can they just don't believe he will do it for them I want you to know that God has no respect to person he don't care if you're black white rich poor male female educated Educated, uneducated he don't care if you went to Adams or Kennedy if you believe God if you trust God if you obey God if you lose your faith like in Vogue said free your mind and the rest will follow it's according to the power that works in you Romans 8 27 let me give you this And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession 
for the saints according to the will of God. When you begin to pray in the spirit, praying in tongues, what's all that praying in tongues? What is all that? The Holy Spirit is praying. He's interceding according to the mind of the spirit. It says, you don't know what you should be praying for. Yeah, Lord, bless my kids. Bless my, bless my Lord. Help my Lord, Lord. You don't even know what you should be praying for. And so the Spirit of God makes intercession for us with moanings and groanings that cannot be uttered. That's why you got to go into your secret prayer closet and close the door. Because the sounds that you're going to make in prayer, nobody going to understand. You ain't going to even understand yourself. You ain't, no, you ain't going to be able to figure it out. But just let those moanings and groanings come out of you. Just weep before the Lord. Pour your heart out. Why? Because that's when the Spirit of God is praying for you according to the will of God in line with the mind of God oh I thank you Lord Lord I thank you Lord Lord I thank you Lord Lord I thank you Lord that's why I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost that's why I want to pray language that's why I want to speak in tongues because I don't know what I need to be praying for but the spirit of God is going to make intercession for us come on say amen somebody we got to learn how to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23, renewed. New is good, but you need to be renewed. What the scripture is suggesting is that it's a process. It's not something that you know, I got saved, I got a new mind. Okay, you better keep on working on that every single day. Why? Because every day there's stuff coming at you that said this is how it is. This is how it go. This is how it is. This is how it go. This is how it is. This is how it go. And according to the will of God for you, that's not how it is and that's not how it's going to go. Stuff bombards your mind. Keep hitting your mind. Hey man, young men struggling with their uh, 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 gender because they're being bombarded in their mind. Being bombarded. Being bombarded in their mind. Women struggling with their gender. Being bombarded in their mind. There are a lot of single people struggling uh, to believe whether or not uh, uh, they're good enough to be married. Why they haven't chose me? Why did it happen for them? Why struggling? It's all in your mind. In your mind. In your mind. Not good enough. In your mind. It's all my fault. In your mind. In your mind. This one don't like you. They don't like this. This person love you, man. They, they love you. They love you to life. I don't know. They don't like me. In your mind. What's wrong with your mind? What's wrong with your mind? You listen, so they don't like you. They ain't going to do right there. You, what are you listening to? Who you, what side? Fred Flintstone? Come on, Flintstone. Fred? What you doing, Fred? You don't know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Now, here's the real trouble here. James 1 and 8. Put that one up, Jackie. James 1 and 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways, and that guy will not receive it. You ain't getting nothing. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there with your kids? All right, y'all pick some candy. Get what you want. What you want at the ice cream score. 31 flavors. Everybody get an ice cream. You got one of them. One of them in there. I, I don't know what I, I want. I want. I want this. I want that. Well, all right. Okay. All right. It's time now. Choose one. I, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I, all right. Now, if you don't choose one, you ain't going to get that's how it goes. That's how it goes. Now let one of them kids get on your nerve real bad. And say, all right, come on, let's go. You got yours? You got yours? You ain't get, no, you ain't get, no. <laughs> yeah, that's a picture of most believers. <laughs> you don't know what you want. I'm telling you, it frustrates me to no end. No end when I'm hanging out with folk. I'm hungry, says you. Okay, what would you like to eat? There you go. Come on. I want a car. All right. What kind of car would you like? It don't matter what the conversation is. Where you want to go? Let's go somewhere. Where you want to go? <laughs> I, I remember the old Jungle Book. That's the, the first cartoon, Jungle Book. There's two birds sitting on the tree. They said, what do you want to do? He said, I don't know. What do you want to do? He said, I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. What? And they go back, cut back to this commercial two or three times throughout the movie. They always sitting there talking. What do you want? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you? And you know what they end up doing. Come on now. That's the way a lot of believers' lives is. You, you don't know what you want. There is nothing like knowing what you want. I have success in my life because I know what I want. 
I don't even, I don't, I don't ever, I don't ever, I don't ever apologize for the success I have. I don't. I just don't. If you ain't got it, there it is. You must didn't want it. Neither did you know what you, I knew, I knew what kind of car I wanted. I knew what color I wanted. I know what suit I want. I know what watch I want. I know what food I want. I want a pizza. I want uh, uh, some, some French toast right now and, and some scrambled eggs and bacon and some uh, hash browns I want, and orange juice, a lot of orange juice with a lot of ice, please, extra ice. Can I have extra ice? And would you bring some extra syrup? Now, that's what I want. I don't just tell you what I want. I ain't going to give it to myself, but that's what I want. If you want to know the truth, I want a couple of glazed donuts on the side. But I know what I want. And there are a lot of people, Mildred, they don't know what they want. They don't know what they want in their relationships. They don't know. They don't. Like, what's wrong? I don't, I don't know. You've been dating for seven years. What's wrong with you? You don't know what you want. You don't, you don't know what you want. You don't know what you want. Okay, I, I don't know. I'm, I have to go back and uh, I got to reinvent myself. I got to go get me another job. I just need, I'm sick of this job. I'm, okay, what do you want? I, I don't, I just want to make money. I just want to make money. You, you can't want the result. You, you got to want a process. Money is, the, money is the result of a process. If you ever get good at the process, money just keeps coming at you. But if you, if, you, if you figure out the process, if you figure out what you want to be, if you want to be uh, a doctor, a lawyer, uh, an entrepreneur, if you want to be uh, a shoemaker, if you want to be a salesman, if you want to be skilled in this, that, or the, if that's what you want, then you go for that. And when you go for that, when you can shoot basketball real good, they will pay you. When you can doctor, if you can cut hair, whatever it is, if you do it good, the money will come. But you got to figure out what it is that you want. What it is you want. What it is you want. Uh, I, I had to learn. I had to learn in life. Uh, as a young minister, uh, where you at, Brunson? Uh, as a young minister, yeah, Brunson, as a young minister, I gave my life wholeheartedly to studying this, this book and this manual and learning how to, how to do what I'm doing here. I mean, everything. And there were other ministers who were called around me, but they were not going forth with the same intensity and passion. I had to learn how not to look down my nose at them. I had to learn that. Why? Because I'm not better than them. It's just that their pursuit was in something else. And I didn't understand it. I didn't understand a person could say, I'm called to preach and not fast and pray and read the Bible incessantly. I, I didn't understand that. When somebody say they're called to ministry and they didn't give themselves to every training apparatus available to them. I didn't understand that. So I was surrounded by people who were committed on another level. Uh, it's because their calling was different and they had other ambitions in their life. But this was my sole call. So now here it is, uh, 35, almost 40 years later, this is what I'm doing and they're doing something else. Because what you commit yourself to will define who you are. If there is no definition for who you are, that's because there's nothing that you're committed to. Uh, Brother John, oh, you mean the guy that runs, the runner? Yeah. Uh, Sister Sally, oh, you mean the restaurant queen? <laughs> Sister Banana, oh yeah, the, the shopaholic, yeah, banana. Sister banana. In other words, whatever you committed to, whatever you do, what, I mean, this is what you do, that's who you are. And you do it because you think it. Third base now, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. How do I control my thoughts? I need to do the right thing, so I need to think the right thing. How do I control my thoughts? Philippians 4 and 8. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, these are the things that you think about. If you want a certain manifestation, then you have to train your mind to think on these things. I'm not going to think about anything else. The stuff that's lovely, the stuff that's pure, the stuff that's just. I'm not going to think about divorce if I don't want to get one. I'm not going to think about failure 
or lack or bankruptcy or repos. I'm not going to think about that. I'm going to put my mind on positive things and keep my mind focused on those things because they will produce my actions. My thoughts will produce my actions. Nothing like seeing a game. Hey, Ozell, you, you've seen it on the golf course when a guy's just beating you bad, just beating you, right? <laughs> and you, you're so beat, you quit. The game ain't over. Wait a minute. No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just out here today. I'm just practicing. You've seen people like that in the basketball game. A team gets so far down, man, they ain't even trying no more. Because they're beating their mind. That, that's what the Cavaliers would try to do. Hey, man, throughout the season when they're winning games, we don't just want to get up on them five points, ten points. We want to get 30, 40. We want to, we want to destroy their mind and, and destroy the potential of them. And even think you don't even, I dare you think about winning this game. Take your starters out. Take all your starters out. Put them on the bench. Rest them for the next game because y'all don't have a chance today. What We want to defeat you in your mind. Third quarter, we want you to put up a white flag. We, we surrender. You won. Tap out. Right, tap out. And you've got to learn how to defeat the enemies that attack you in that way. It, it's like what David did. David is dancing before the Lord, right? His wife looks out and sees him dance. She said, oh, boy, you thought you was all that today. So you got an attitude about me dancing? Wait till tomorrow. <laughs> Wait till tomorrow, dude. I am going. Oh, I'm going to dance tomorrow. You didn't like this? I'm about to turn it up. Isaiah 26 and 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. Amen. Thoughts precede action and creation. If you understand that when you think about it, that's, that's how it goes. And, and you, you got to catch this. There's a passage in Luke 15. You all are familiar with the story of the prodigal son. Man's got two sons. One says, give me money, I'm out. He takes his money, goes out. He's clubbing, he's dancing, he's partying. He wastes his money. He ends up in the pig stein. The Bible says the man came to himself and he said, I will arise. I will go to my father. I'm going to say these words and I'm going to give me a job with my dad. Uh, what the spirit is suggesting, what the, what the writing is suggesting is the man had a conversation in his mind. He, he, there was a change that took place in his mind. He was in a pigsty, but when he changed his mind in the pigsty, his mind got him out of the pigsty back to his father's house. So if you want to get out of a pit, you need to change your mind. 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 Lord have mercy. Oh, I'm going ahead. But you need to change your mind and stop being broke. You can change your mind. You can say, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to be broke no more. You can literally change your mind. How do you do that? Stop spending all your money. Stop helping people that you know are not going to give you your money back. Start saving money and investing money. All you got to do is change your mind. And once you change your mind, you're going to change your behavior. I'm telling you, you can change your mind and get another job. You can change your mind and be the boss. You can change your mind and start your own, my God, business. You can change your mind. It's just a change of mind. My God. The Bible teaches us, amen, in Psalm 91, verse 1, it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place. The point that I want to make as I begin to conclude is that everybody needs a place to think. Think about that, Sean. Everybody needs a place to think. You need to go to a place where you can think. You need to have a place. I don't care if it's in your house or if it's in the park or if it's by the side of a brook or if it's downtown or if it's watching, my God, a sunset, a sunrise at a beach. I don't care where it is. Everybody needs a place where you can think. Why? Because you can think yourself rich. You can think yourself happy. You can think yourself out of a jam. You can think healing back back into your life. You can think yourself back on the right track. Amen. They say, I don't mean to offend, amen, but they say people that have to work eight hours a day are like slaves, amen, not because they're bound to a job by hours, amen, uh, uh, trading dollars for hours, but because they don't have no time to think. The real, the real curse sometimes of working an hourly job is that you don't have any time to think. You can't think and plan 
plan your future. You can't think and plan, amen, even for your health. You don't have time to think and plan for your marriage. You don't have time to think and plan, my God, even for your children and their education. Why? Because, amen, you got to go on this cycle up at 6 in the morning, up at 7, all the way going to 6, 7 o'clock in the evening. Get home. You got to wash your clothes. You got to find some food to eat. You got to get your hair done. Get your nails. You got to try to, amen, keep yourself up. And there's, there's time for everything, but there's no time to think. And you wonder why your life is in shambles because you don't have no time to think. And anytime you have time off oh that's only time to go to the laundromat that's only time to wash your clothes that's only time to wash your car that's the only time you have to take your kid to McDonald's that's the only time and you never have time to think you have got to create some thinking time I know this don't sound real spiritual but I need at least an hour a day to sit down and think about it I need to think about what I'm doing with my money I need to think about amen the friends that I'm giving myself to the time where am I exhorting my energy I need to think about amen to God my walk with God my church experience I want to think about the call of God that's upon my life am I fulfilling what God has called me to do I need to think about my training and my education I need to understand what's going on in this political world that I'm living in in this social world that I'm living in what is going on with my children what's going on with my husband you cannot imagine how many wives have no clue of what's going going on with their husband how many husbands have no clue what's going on with their wives how many parents have no clue what's going on with their children because you don't have time to think the bible says he that dwelt in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty everybody needs a secret place in their life the bible says that first chronicle 17 verse 16 that david sat before the lord he went and meditated before the lord my bible says blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of the sinner nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in this law he meditates day Ah, he's spending some time thinking I'm just meditating on the goodness of the Lord he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water he shall bring forth fruit in his season his leaves shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper Prosperity begins to happen because you've got some time to trust God, to wait on God, and to defeat the devil in the battlefield of your mind. Now, my Bible said in Matthew chapter 14 that Jesus Christ would steal away into a mountain to pray. In other words, Jesus Christ had a secret place he would resort to time and time again whether it was a mountain whether it was the wilderness whether it was the garden of Gethsemane what were you there doing Jesus I was praying I was meditating I was thinking I was waiting on God I was strategizing and that's what's wrong with the church amen to God we don't have time my God to think we don't think we don't think about it you've got to think about it and I know there's a time to act and the time to stop thinking but there's some time to strategize my God you've got to think why because as a man thinketh, come on Larry nah. yeah as a man thinketh, so is he if a man think he's blessed then he's blessed if a man thinks he's prosperous then he's prosperous if a man starts thinking and develop the right strategy yeah, God begins to connect him with the right people uh, how in the world are cities built uh, how in the world does somebody come up with an ideal to fly an airplane from one end of the world to another part of the world that takes some deep thinking uh, let's go way back to the invention of the wheel let's go back to a time where men were carrying all of their wares uh, and somebody said there's got to be a better way uh, and they sat there until they thought about the wheel uh, and they put the wheel on the cart uh, and next thing you know we've got the combustible engine uh, boy if we can put a motor on this cart uh, that took thought uh, well in the hot sun somebody said we need an air conditioner in the car uh, wouldn't it be nice to have some music in the car? Now, wouldn't it be nice to have a car that can let the top down? Now, how in the world do we get to this modern age that we're living in? Now, because somebody 
put thought and ideal. Somebody was able to quiet all the noise in their life and get a word from God. A word about a microphone. A word about an iPad. A word about reading glasses. Because of the power of thought. Whatsoever man thinketh, so is he. And I've learned how to elevate my mind. How to not let my mind stay in the gutter. One of the things about addiction is it destroys the mind. Now, it tells the mind that you can't live without this nicotine. Now, it tells the mind you can't live without this alcohol. You can't live without pornography. You can't live without this man. Now, you can't live without this woman. Now, you can't live without this job. But I want you to know what my Bible says. In the beginning was the word. Ah, and the word was with God there was a thought that came from God and it ends like this in Jeremiah 29 and 11 he says I know the thoughts that I think of thee they're thoughts of good and not of evil my thoughts are to give you an expected end I don't know how your life is going to turn out but I think my life is going to be alright I think I'm going to have what I believe I think I'm the head and not the tail. I think I'm blessed rising up and sitting down. I think I'm blessed going out and coming in. I'm blessed my basket in my store. So say yeah. So say yeah, yeah. I'm going to have life and that more abundantly. Yeah. I think I'm going to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. I think I'm going to be God's man. I think a just man falls seven times and rise him up again I think I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me I think no weapon formed against me shall prosper so say yeah so say yeah I believe I have I believe I have all things that pertain to life and godliness I believe greater is he that liveth in me than he that is in the world I think myself happy I think myself free I think myself blessed I think myself prosperous I think success into my life I'm winning the battle for my mind thank God World War I thank God World War II thank God for NBA championship but I'm winning, I'm winning the battle for my mind. I'm winning the battle in my intellect, my cerebral cortex, my medulla oblongata, my cerebellum, my northern hemisphere, my southern hemisphere, my brain. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. He thought it not robbery to consider himself equal with God. I am because I say I am. I can do what I say I can do. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. I'm winning the battle. I'm winning the battle. I'm winning for my mind. I'm winning in my mind. I'm winning in my mind because if I get my mind right if I get my mind right I can get my money right if I get my mind right I can get my health right if I get my mind right I can get my future right if I get my mind right I can get my marriage right I can get my kids right I can get my walk with God right I can get my faith right I can get my joy right I can get my power right. I can get my strip right. I can get my love right. So see ya. Woo. Lay your hand on your mind. Come on, lay your hand on your mind. Mind, you're not going to think negative thoughts. You're not going to think Thoughts of defeat, 
you're not going to think poverty and sickness. You're not going to think loneliness and sadness. But this mind is going to serve God. This mind is a creative mind. This mind is a beautiful mind. This mind is an intuitive mind. This mind is a brilliant mind because it's formed in the hand of God. Now give God praise. Somebody give him, give him praise. Give, give him praise. Give him praise, yeah. Give him praise. Yeah! Yeah! My mind say, it's time to praise the Lord. I said, my mind say, it's time to praise the Lord. No matter what you're going through, let's praise the Lord. Come on, bring up the lights. Let's shout. Let's dance. Let's clap. Let's sing. Let's give God glory. Cause I'm winning. I'm winning. Yeah. I'm winning. I'm winning the battle. For my man. For 30 seconds, let's give God your best praise. For 30 seconds, come on, church. Concerning you, Rabba Sakaya Rabba Shata. And all the people, yes, Lord. And all the people said, Amen, Amen. I want to pray for just a few people this morning. If you've been struggling with a real battle in your mind, come here. Leave your seat. Come to me. Come here. Come here. If you have been struggling, yeah, you've been struggling. Some people struggle with suicidal thoughts. Some people struggle with depression, loneliness, think that it's going to be as bad as it is for the rest of your days. Not going to be that way. Win the battle. Hey, Michelle, win that battle, girl for your mind that's right that's right win the battle for your mind who do you think you are you know who you are you know what belongs to you you know what you're supposed to have you know the great God that is in you you know that you are a river that flows from the stream you are a branch that extends from the vine. Oh, come here, my daughter. Ah, Rabba Yande Leboso. Yes, you will win the battle. Kaya Rabba Shiete for your mind. This is the mind of Christ. And as I lay my hand, the power of God comes on you now. Let the power of God overshadow you. Come on, sweetheart. In the name of
name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, do what doctors can't do, what medicine can't do, what therapy can't do. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You will. Thank you for it now. Thank you for it. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Ayarabasa. Oh, Karabasia. In that battle for your mind. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mighty God. Oh, Rabasa Yarabashi. I pray today against the spirit of depression and oppression. Spirit of heaviness, be lifted. Be lifted in this house. Be lifted in this house. Be lifted in this house. Yes, Lord. As I lay my hand, there it is. The burden is being lifted right now. There it is. The, the strength of God is flowing into you again. Yes, never second guess. No more doubting. Kayarabasa. Hey, be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit of God. As I lay my hand, the Lord lays His hands upon you, and you will never be the same again. You will never be the same again. You will never be the same again. Hey, glory to God. Somebody worship the Lord today. Come on, worship the Lord. Let your power rest upon this, your servant. Winning the battle. Winning the battle. There it is. Oh, glory. My God. Give a victory today. Even in the area of her thought processes. Mighty God. Order her steps and direct her path. Stir up that divine intuition. And let her not doubt it. Let her be strong in her faith. Ah, order her steps. Order her steps. There it is. There it is. No more confusion. Rabba siata. I speak peace. I speak the peace of God that passeth all understanding. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for it now, Lord. Thank you for it now, Lord. Thank you for it now, Lord. Thank you for it. Lord, as I lay my hand, lay your hand, Rabashata. Win the battle. Win the battle. Win the battle. I declare victory over you today. There it is. Hey! Do what you do, Lord. Do what you do, Lord. Hey! No weapon formed against you will prosper. And all those that rise against you will fall. I release unto you power to have victory in your soul, in your heart, and even over your mind. I break addiction. I break stronghold. I break it now. There it is. Come on. Come on, Elvis. Raise those hands. Stretch out to the Lord. Stretch out to him. Give yourself to him again. There it is. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. That's what the Lord wants. That's what the Lord wants. No weapon formed against you will prosper, brother. Yeah, there it is. Come here, precious. Holy Spirit, touch my daughter now. Give her your strength. Never let her doubt. Never let her doubt. Never let her doubt. In the name of Jesus, my God. Thank you for it. Thank you for it. Holy Spirit, my son, my son, give your grace to him. Give your strength to him. Yes, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. There it is. Mighty God, touch my daughter. Strengthen her. I speak life to her now. I declare the power of God over her now. 
Give us strength in our faith and our walk with God. Prepare us for the bright future. Randa, no fear, no fear, no doubt, no hesitation. Trust the Lord. Trust in Him. He will work it out. He will bring it to pass. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. today win the battle today win the battle today everybody on this altar at your seat raise your hands lift those hands to the Lord Holy Spirit touch everyone every soul every daughter my God my God move by your strength I rebuke the spirit of doubt hesitation second guessing and I speak strength over this people that they will know without a shadow of a doubt what you have placed in their heart, what you have declared for their future, what you have declared for their, for their, for their, for their immediate future. Even as they change their mind, they change their trajectory. Let them hold the course. Let them stay the course. Let them be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For they know that their labor is not in vain in the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on and clap your hands and worship the Lord today. Yeah. Good God Almighty. Go ahead and clap. Give him a worship. Lord, I thank you. I can. I can. Yes, yes, yes. God bless you. Before you go back to your seat, even those of you that are at your seat that are standing, how many of you say, this is the word from the Lord for me? This is my, this your word? Is this your word? You win the battle for your mind. Don't be vacillating. You got that? You got to know what God has put in your heart. Know what God has told you to do. Know who you are and do it. Don't worry about what you see. You got that? Stay right there. And do what God has called you to do. No hesitation. No hesitation. No hesitation. No hesitation. No hesitation. Close your eyes. I need to minister to some people. Everybody close your eyes. I'm ministering to some of my daughters today. Who the enemy has tried to speak lies to in your ear. That it will be this way for the rest of your life. It's, it's going to never work out for you. You always, always find yourself in a jacked up situation. And it's changed your thoughts about yourself. Today I reverse the curse. I reverse the curse over you. And I speak life over you. Today I water you like a flower. That's been, that's been shielded from the sun. Today, I set you in the sun. Today, I command you to blossom, to bloom, to come forth in your brilliance, in your beauty. To come forth as the woman of God that the Lord has called you to be. As the sanctified woman, as the holy woman of God. I call you forth. I call you forth. Receive that word today. Receive it right where you are. Receive the love of God. Receive the love of the Spirit. Receive His comfort today. Receive that ministry for you. Somebody's watching by way of the internet. Receive that ministry today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Winning the battle. Winning the battle for your mind. It's our time now. Whose time is it? B-O-C-A Well, praise the Lord. Once again, I'm Bishop Eric Kincaid Clark, and I certainly pray that this message has blessed you, strengthened you, and encouraged you in your walk with God. 
I would like for you to sow a seed, a tithe, or a special offering into the work of God as we here at the Body of Christ Assembly are a church in the city impacting the world. We're doing the work of God and we do desire you to